Hello and welcome to GeForce. I'm Julian here with Florian and we're going to talk about Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Mm -hmm. It's quite the name, but that's because it's got kind of quite the history behind it. You're coming from a 2004 cult favorite. So tell me what Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is all about. It is a game where you wake up without having ever wished for it, being a vampire, being a monster amongst humans in a world full of them hiding in the shadows. And fundamentally it's about you first trying to figure out how to survive in this viper's nest and then possibly to thrive and in the end making decisions about how to throw whatever influence you manage to scrunch around. So this is the long-awaited sequel. The first mm -hmm. one came out in 2004. Yeah. That took place in the original city of Bloodsuckers, Los Angeles. And now we have a new setting in Seattle, exactly. correct? Now, looking at it with RTX implemented, mm -hmm. how does that help bring the city to life? Right. You actually basically already gave me my perfect cues here, so thank you very much. We have, from the start, decided to pick a very neo-noir kind of uh, art style. It's very strongly this kind of contrast between neon lighting, which is ever present in Seattle, on one hand, and the darkness of the night, as you said yourself. And then when you start with these strong contrasts, and if you want to tell a noir story, and Bloodlines very much is a noir story, you start looking for these small things that on one hand make it feel believable, on the other hand make it feel a little grubby. At that point, transparent reflections become a kind of all-purpose tool just to dial that up a little bit. If you do that in normal modern technology, what you do is you start working with darker colors, you maybe set up here and there a few reflections that are kind of faked into puddles and so on, which all really looks cool. But then you turn on RTX and you start using transparent reflections via ray tracing and suddenly the world looks back at you in these puddles and suddenly there are these small specks of brilliance in this otherwise very, very grimy world and it just ups that contrast that our artists are after. So you're not as involved in the technical aspect, uh, being more on the publishing side. Mm -hmm. I assume, though, you actually get to sit down and play, and you play with Absolutely. RTX off and mm -hmm. RTX on. And for you as a player, mm -hmm. what's the difference? I love what our artists do with the game, and they manage to really make it feel like a proper city, even with RTX off. But then you switch it on, and you only then notice that there was something missing. And to me, that's crucial, because the idea of a world of darkness, which is where Vampire Masquerade plays, is that this is our world. And behind the shadows, there are monsters and you never noticed because they've always been there. It's been normal that they are there and that's horrible on some level. And for that to really bite, excuse the pun, you kind of need that level of authenticity. So anything that makes it feel more normal before the facade breaks is awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. And thank you guys for tuning in here on GeForce. Don't forget to subscribe because that is your chance to win one of 20 GeForce RTX 2080 Super GPUs, as well as a host of other prizes. You can also follow us on the social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at NVIDIA GeForce for your chance to win. Until next time, I'll see you on GeForce.